KATC Weather Lab. Here's Eric's forecast. Welcome back. Hopefully you've been able to get outside and enjoy our beautiful weather. But for many residents across Florida, the rains from Hurricane Irma are already arriving and now some severe weather. As you can see, the numerous tornado warnings out across the southern tip just to the south of Miami. We have some up towards the Fort Lauderdale area and up to the north. So a lot of bad weather already beginning to make its way in. And the center of the eye continues to be well offshore down just to the north of Cuba. It has been riding along the north of Cuba all afternoon, but it is finally starting to show a little bit of that north north westerly pack and that's going to continue as we go through the evening hours as it heads up towards the Keys as we go through the overnight hours and then eventually making landfall on the western side of Florida as we go throughout tomorrow afternoon. So let's take the wider look at what Hurricane Irma has been doing over the last several hours. You can see she has quickly been moving just to the north of Cuba, staying out over waters. That's allowing it to remain a very strong hurricane at that with winds up to 125 miles per hour. You can see the heavy rains that have been causing a lot of issues back through Cuba. Cuba. Also now there's rains making their way into Florida, but here's that western edge of it. That's that frontal system that's going to help this and help steer it up into Florida as we go through the coming hours. So taking a tighter look at this system, you can see it is just a very powerful system at that. Just continuing to make its way and causing massive destruction across all the areas that is going, especially across the northern portion of Cuba. They've been dealing with that today and eventually all that power is going to make its way up into Florida. So the latest on Hurricane Irma is it's a cat Category 3 storm with 125 mile an hour winds gusts up to 155 though, so a very powerful system at that. Moving off to the west, northwest at 9 miles, but eventually that's going to turn more northerly as we go through the next several hours. And so here's the track as we go through the next 36 hours. You can see as it begins to make that turn to the north as we go through the coming hours and it gets over the Strait of Florida, very warm waters. That'll allow it to re-strengthen once it gets away from Cuba again. Could get up to winds up to 130 miles per hour. And that's what it's going to do as it slams through the keys as we go through the overnight hours and then maybe even strengthen up to about 140 as we go throughout tomorrow afternoon. Still remaining just offshore on the west coast of Florida, but eventually maybe towards the Fort Myers area late tomorrow afternoon into the early evening. It'll make a second landfall in the Florida and then continue right up the west coast. And you can see even up towards the Tampa area still maintaining category three strength winds up to 115 miles per hour and then makes its way through Florida. So Florida is going to get hit with the brunt of this storm of winds anywhere from 100 to 120 miles an hour around the center of the storm of winds maintaining hurricane force above 75 throughout much of the area. So you can see hurricane warnings out for the entire peninsula of Florida. This is going to be a very destructive storm. It doesn't begin the weekend until it moves into Georgia late Monday afternoon. Still a category one hurricane before becoming a tropical storm as it heads up towards the Atlanta area and then becoming a tropical depression as it heads up into the Tennessee Valley by the middle part of next week. So a lot to go with this system in the coming days and we're going to continue to keep an eye on that. So here's one model depiction of what's expected to happen. So you can see by around 7 o'clock, that's when the eye of the hurricane will be moving right over the keys. The heaviest rain bands again on the eastern side. So the main portion of Florida is going to get hit hammered hard with very heavy rain and very gusty winds as it continues to make its way through tomorrow afternoon, making its way up the west coast, heading towards the Fort Myers area. And you can see a very defined eye. So very strong winds wrapping around this throughout much of Florida, along with those heavy rains as it continues to make its way up the west coast, then continuing to head in to the Georgia area as we go into Monday afternoon. Heavy rain still a possibility. Flooding can be a concern even up into Georgia in the South Carolina area. And then as we go into Monday evening, finally begin the week and some as it gets up towards the Atlanta area, but still probably seeing some 50, 60, 70 mile an hour wind gusts back through the Atlanta area. And then as we go into Tuesday, the storm finally begins to kind of fall apart a little bit. Rain's beginning to lessen a little bit, but you can see we might see some of that cloud cover come Tuesday afternoon and a little bit more of that make its way as we go into Wednesday. So as for how much rainfall across much of Florida, they're looking at some high totals. You can see most of the areas anywhere from six to nine inches, but even some higher amounts than that up to 12 inches for Orlando, the Daytona Beach. And you can see where those tan areas are. Those are 15 inches of rain, so flooding along with bayous and streams going to be a major concern causing all that water. Also storm surge, as you can see, keys anywhere from five to eight feet in many of those areas, and those are very low areas, so that's a big concern. Also the west coast 
of Florida now looks to be the main area, especially south of Highway 75. As you can see, 20 foot of inundation. The good news is a large part of that is over the Everglades, so not a whole lot of population, but you do see a few towns in there that could get wiped out by the strong storm surge. Even Fort Myers, anywhere from 10 to 12 feet of water coming up into the area. So that is going to be a major concern in the coming days as we continue to watch that as we go forward. Also, we have Hurricane Jose, still a tropical or category 4, 145 miles per hour. The good news is it's moving away from the Caribbean islands. We'll stay out over the waters, begin the weekend some, and then kind of do a loop. After that loop, we're going to have to keep an eye on that as you do see some of the models maybe trying to now bring it back towards America, but that will be late into next week and into the following weekend, so we still have some time to track that. Main concern right now continues to be Irma. Closer to the home, very pleasant across our area. Temperatures falling into the low 60s tonight under clear skies. Tomorrow afternoon, more of the same. Temperatures making their way into the 80s. Looking like plenty of sunshine, but as I mentioned, we will have a little bit of a breeze out of the north northeast at 15 miles per hour. So a pleasant night, 63 for the low. Then as we go throughout our Mon Sunday, we should see those temperatures make their way, as I mentioned, into the mid 80s. Plenty of sunshine with that refreshing north breeze as we get those out of the north east between 10 to 18 miles per hour. Staying dry as we go through the first half of the week. Maybe a slight chance of rain by Tuesday into Thursday, but still looking pretty dry as we head towards next weekend. Plenty of sunshine returns, but it will start to feel a little bit more like summer again as we get back to the 90s, and that will continue as we go into the next week as well. Thanks, Eric. More news still ahead. We'll be right back.